guys, it's Nick the Booksmith. Welcome back, welcome back. Shall we make a little book today? I think we shall. It's been a minute since I've been back. I guess a little over a week. You know, I think doing taxes broke my brain. I needed a little bit of time to recoup. Oh, so what these are, this is some offcuts that I had a stack of and I thought, well, might as well do something with them. I separated them into three for each like little pile. So I'll have three in a signature, I guess. It but I mean that's arbitrary. You can you can do whatever you want, man. But I just chose three. This paper is a little thicker than copy paper. If it was copy paper weight, I probably would go with, I don't know, four, maybe five, but it's thicker, so I'm just gonna do three so that it's not too bulky at the fold when it gets all sewn together, it's less bulky. I hope that makes sense. And also it happened that the grain was running in this direction. So that makes it great for the fold as well. What is all over my bone folder? Goodness gracious, who knows? Who knows? So what have you been up to? I started a big job. I, I didn't mean to, it wasn't my intention. But um, after rummaging through the linen closet, in vain, I might add, for some pillowcases that I knew I had, I knew I had them because I'd seen them in there, a final straw gently floated down and landed on the camel's back. And I thought to myself, why am I constantly shifting random stuff around to get to the stuff I do use? All this extra, extraneous, excess, excessive <laughs> inventory is, um, well, it was stressing me out. I don't know, it's like, um, it's like when you, when you buy something to do a project and you, know, you don't get to that project, you know, life happens or you lose your motivation or you know, just get out of the mood, whatever. Then every time you see said project materials, it's like it's yelling at you. Why aren't you finishing? <laughs> yeah, and I think that kind of stresses us out. It's our inner monologue telling us that we're not doing exactly what we said we were gonna do or something, I don't know. Then those things sit there for forever. So back to my previous thought. You know, I was digging around in the linen closet and I, I took a picture for y'all. You get to see the uh, skeleton in the closet or the unfolded fitted sheets in the closet. How's that? So I can't fold a fitted sheet to save my life. I mean, you might as well just put me in front of the firing squad because it's just not gonna happen. So everything from the top shelf, I took it out, laid it on the living room floor, and then I went through it and kind of separated it into keep and donate or whatever. Some things had to be trash. Nobody wants pillowcases that we used when we used to go camping. Nobody wants those. And then next I took everything off the middle shelf and basically did the same thing. Just kind of separated everything. I took a very unemotional mindset about it. I think when you, well, at least this is with me. So let me know if you're the same. With me, it will, I can ignore something for a long, 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 too long of time. And then all of a sudden it's just too much and it has to be taken care of, you know, yesterday. I want it done yesterday. And at that point, emotions be damned. I don't care. Just get it out of my face. So I was able to unbiasedly just kind of look at things in a way that, okay, am I using this? Have we used this? Even if we intended to use this, is it theoretically really ever going to be used? And so by taking that kind of a practical view on it, I was able to uh, downsize quite a bit on both the top and those that middle shelf. Now, mind you, this linen closet, it's, it's really odd. We bought this house and I looked in that linen closet. I was like, holy crow, uh, because they're like three feet deep or more. It, like it's a really super deep closet, but I only have those three shelves. Below it are three drawers, which my husband keeps his t-shirts and uh, like summer clothes in. 
I think this is enough paper, don't you? It might even be too much. So that's where I keep all the linens, you know, the bed sheets and extra pillows, blankets, etc., etc. The bottom shelf is basically a menagerie of cleaning supplies and toiletries, a first aid kit, that kind of thing. And all that stuff for the most part was just organized into the two tubs that it was in because it was I'm like I'm not going to donate brand new toothpaste I'm just going to keep it because we're going to use it you know what I mean sunscreen and all that kind of stuff it's like no we use all this stuff I we just happened to buy in bulk and uh didn't need to use four tubes of toothpaste at once and then sometimes you forget you have toothpaste or whatever and you purchase it again because who of us hasn't done that these three are a little taller. I think I'm just gonna do this. So then I just reorganize those and put those back into tubs. But that wasn't enough. Oh no, because your girl was on a roll, my friends. So it probably didn't help that I had come across a few Dana K. White decluttering videos. <laughs> I think she's my people. I'll, I'll link her down below because she kind of has my brain. So then I went to um, the coat closet and the coat closet is very small. I went through that and there was, oh man, all kinds of stuff in there that I had not even put on in two, three years. Some of it even more. It was, it was ridiculous. Hold on, I have to think how many, so I need an even number. So we'll do here and here, sorry. I can't talk and make dots at the same time. So that got all, you know, all the excess stuff taken out. And then I went to my closet. And here's where the decrapping really hit the fan. I do not have a huge closet. It's just a standard size closet with, you know, slidey doors. Although I don't have to share it with anybody, so that's nice. But that being said, I also hadn't purged out my closet in a while. There was bigger clothes and smaller clothes. So I had gotten rid of some stuff because it was way too big. And then I bought new stuff. And now the new stuff that I had bought, and granted, a lot of this is secondhand. So take new with a grain of salt. You know what, I think I'm gonna stack up several and do more at once than just one. Well, they don't fit anymore, which is fine. I don't care. My point is, is that I deserve to have clothes that fit. So those went away. I just don't want to look at it. I don't want to see it in there because I just end up shifting it around to get to the stuff I do wear. Clothes that don't fit are useless. Clothes I don't really like are useless. Clothes that aren't comfortable are useless. And I noticed that um, every time I put away laundry that I was putting away the same items every time and shoving the rest of it further back into the drawers or into the closet, wherever I was shoving. Do you guys do that? Do you do that? Do you inevitably choose the same items to wear over and over? I think, I think a lot of us do that. I don't really love to clothes shop. It's not something that I just, I have to be in the mood for it. If I'm in the mood for it or if I'm with a friend, it's easier but it's just not, I don't know. So anyway, at the end of the day, this was the donation pile. There were seven 35 gallon bags of clothes, linens, pillows, shoes, bulky coats, fabric remnants, etc. And then three smaller bags of the same things. And it all went to the thrift store because Everything that I put in those donation bags was in good shape. I hope somebody gets some use out of them. The following day, <laughs> nothing is safe and nothing is sacred. My target was on the kitchen and I started going through the cabinets, which I have a lot of cabinets in my kitchen. They go all the way to the ceiling. And so that is a bad thing for somebody like me that is a just in case buyer. Or if it's like a really cool kitchen gadget or something, I used to be a pastry chef and uh, I've worked in a professional kitchen. And so it's kind of a weak spot, I think for me is kitchen stuff, baking, 
pans and silicone molds and let's see what else I get uh, a bread maker like a really nice zojirushi bread maker ice cream maker then there was our old coffee maker and our previous Keurig that still works but we had gotten a new one and so we kept it the original one because we thought well what if this new one just unexpectedly dies at least we'll have the old one until we can go get another one and that was i don't know four or five years ago <laughs> still hasn't died so out that went too i got rid of like i don't know about a dozen or more cookbooks or like cooking magazines just stuff that i had you know bought at a thrift store or something and i just you thumb through it and then it's I don't know, maybe they're just not as great as you thought they were going to be or you just never ended up using, whatever. I don't know. I'm not going to make excuses. I just didn't use them. I don't know why I'm justifying that. It's a 50 cent cookbook. And I put it all in the back of the car. The seats were folded down and it filled up the entire back of the car. So we get, it was substantial haul and all this stuff was in great shape. Everything worked. It all went to the donation center. Off it went. And I don't know about you guys, but that was kind of liberating. It felt great to unload stuff out of the house that wasn't being utilized. Because why are we keeping it around if we're not using it just for some what if day? Some what if day that I decide that I want to use, I don't know, a bread maker again when I usually just make bread by hand because there's only two of us, so I don't need to make a ton of bread. I don't know, it just, all of a sudden, it just seemed ridiculous to me. It was dawning on me that keeping all this extra miscellaneous, extra stuff I don't use and may never use was making it harder to live in my house, basically. Either I was rummaging through it to get to something I was using, you know, shifting it back and forth. You know how that is, especially in your closet. Hanger by hanger by hanger by hanger. And how many times do you pass by something that you haven't put on in two years or more? But there it hangs in your closet, waiting for you to pick me, pick me. It never happens. Why? This is just stressing me out because I have to either handle it to get it out of the way or I think in my head, oh, well, that doesn't fit anymore or maybe the seams are scratchy or the tag is scratchy because I'm one of those people. Yeah, as a kid, I was super fun for my mom. Some people can have all this stuff in their house, like extra stuff. It could be filled to the brim and they seemingly don't have any repercussions from that. They can be oblivious to it. It doesn't cause them any undue stress or anxiety or anything. I'm going to sew this together and then I'll trim this. And I say extra stuff. That is a, it's a relative term. Maybe your house is massive and you've got tons of room. And so having extra stuff around isn't really a big deal because you've got so much room. Or maybe you have a, like a really big basement or something that you can just chuck stuff down the stairs and then never have to look at it again until you have to go down there and find something that is. I don't have a basement. So everything I have, I have to look at. But I would challenge you, even if you do have a big, huge basement or a big attic or a big barn or big something, that you have plenty of room to stash all kinds of stuff that you may never see for the rest of this decade. And it causes you no, no brain power. I still challenge you that on some level, it brings stress to your life. And if it doesn't bring stress to your life, perhaps it brings stress to somebody in your household, unless you live by yourself. And maybe it's bringing stress to the cat because the cat sees it. But even if it wasn't causing me, you know, like active stress in my brain to have to look at it and manage it and whatever, I always thought, what if something happened to me and my friends or family or whatever had to come into my house and deal with all this stuff. Would that be fair to them? And I thought, no, it probably wouldn't because then that would just be adding extra work for people that I love after I'm gone. I don't know why I think about things like that. I just do. Most people would not last a day in my head. So if you don't think like that, please be grateful. 
Hence, I have been systematically going through areas in the house that have needed some attention. Let's just put it that way. And I do feel so much better. I'm gonna stop rambling and I will put this on fast forward and I will finish sewing this up. And I will link down below a video that shows this sewing style in greater detail and I actually talk about it instead of talking about cleaning out my closet. How's that? So while I was blathering, I have too many pillowcases, blah, blah, blah. I forgot to put end papers on my book. It would have been better to put them on before the super, but here we are. I think this will work okay. Just a piece of the Pepin paper that I love that I usually get at Amazon. Link is below if you want to check on my favorites list, if they have it in stock. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. And I lost my, my craft knife. I don't know, I'm gonna lose it. It's around here somewhere, because it doesn't have legs, and pretty positive it didn't walk out the door. Although, some days it would not surprise me if it had. It's another reason why I need to uh, declutter and organize because I lose things and then I don't know where they are and I end up buying another one because I can't find it. You guys do that? So maybe if I didn't have so much crap, laying around the house for it to hide in. <laughs> Maybe I wouldn't lose it. I don't know. I'm just gonna fold this. Oh, that'll probably work. I'm gonna trim this book block anyway. I'm just brushing some PVA glue on like, I don't know, five millimeters or a quarter inch, well, a little less than a quarter inch because this is a small book, on one of the uh, sides next to the fold. And then I just line that up. Hopefully. There we go. And same thing on this side. Now I'm going to go trim this edge down. And let's see, where do I want to trim it? I will say probably about about there, which is two and a half inches deep. And then the height is like three and three quarter. So that's what it'll end up being about the um, dimensions of the book. 
All right, I will be right back. I'm going to go choppy choppy. All right, it is all chopped down. I'm going to take this scrap piece of thin chipboard or thick cardstock, whatever you uh, want to call it. And I'm going to mark kind of the width. That should fit. Because it's just here to fill in on the spine between the the little headbands that I put on, there's like an indention. So I'm gonna soften it up with this dowel rod so that it's not so rigid. I'd have to hold it for a second because it doesn't always just like to stick without any encouragement. I'm going to cut my cover boards and I have this um, piece of chipboard from the back of a watercolor uh, paper pad. The grain is going in this direction, so that is the direction I'll be cutting the boards. That will be parallel with the spine. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to calculate what the cover board size needs to be for, uh, for this size of book. I'm just going to estimate what I'm going to want it to end up looking like. So the book block is 94 millimeters tall. So I'm gonna add four millimeters to that so I can have two millimeters top and bottom as overhang. And so that will be 98. 98 will be the height. As far as the width goes, the book block is 70 millimeters wide. So I'm going to take off three millimeters from that, which is 67. And I'll show you why. And then as far as the uh, spine goes, spine piece, the width of the book block is about 13. So I'm gonna add two millimeters to that and that'll be 15. Okay. So I said, 67 for the width, right? Which is right, right there. Man, I wish I knew where my, I mean, I've got this and this. I'll have to locate my craft knife, my Ulfa, my pride and joy. Use this one. So there's the width. And then the height was 98, which is right there. I like using like a quilter square or something similar because when you line up where, you know, you marked that that 98 is going to be, then you can look at the other side and make sure that other edge is lined up with one of these lines so that everything is fairly squarely. Okay, I don't want to use something as heavy as this for the spine. You, you can, I'm just not going to because I want it to naturally round a little bit when um, I put the book together. And if you use a real thick spine material, it will keep it from rounding. I'm gonna mark it at 15. And then I need to just trim it to the same height as the boards. There we are. So there is those pieces. So now I have to decide what I'm gonna use for my cover material. I'm going to grab some of my letters to put something on the spine. And then I need the two little locking things. I'll use this one. I'm just going simple and doing the word journal. And then here are the locking pieces for the end. 
lock that side in and then lock this side in. So that should work. And then I'm going to put it on this piece of uh, book tape. Grab this. I'll do it on the side. I can find the center of both sides. And here. And that way helps me line this up and I can even mark on this where the center is because the edges will be turned over so we'll, we'll see that anyway. There, now I can line it up because there's a grid on the foil machine so this will help me line it up and it will get turned over about a half an inch from the top and the bottom. So I'm going to want the word journal about that high. So the J starts about here and L about in this, this area. All right. Let's go stamp this puppy. I know I need to set up a permanent system for lining things up on the foiling machine. I just, I don't know, I just haven't done that yet. So here is my little spine thingy that I built and it will go right in the center. Right in the middle like that. To make things a little bit easier on me, I took a scrap of that chipboard and I put my spacer knitting needle up against a straight edge and then I marked along the edge and then I trimmed that out. This is uh, some backing from like a shipping label paper. We use like a half an inch piece. And that way I can take the spacer and line that up against this, uh, you know, the middle spine piece thing. And then I can line that up and lay it down and then pick it up, turn that around. It's like the hokey pokey. And then there is my five millimeter gap. And then I can peel that away and set that down and then peel this one away. And stick it down too. And there I have my spine and my covers. And then I've got this piece of paper that I can use to line the inside. I'm just gonna kinda line it up. It doesn't have to be exact. It just needs to fit in there. And then And then once it sticks to the tape, it ain't going nowhere. And then I'm just going to put some glue on the side of this book board because I want the paper liner to stick to the book board on the edge as well.
fold that down and it'll get glued to the inside of this book board as well but definitely want it to not be gapping right here make a little mark so I know how far the glue will go and I'll just paint it or brush it I always say that and I think no it's brush <laughs> My inner voice scolds me for being so absent-minded. Fold that down. And then for the last part, we can fold, we, me and the mouse in my pocket, can fold this over. Now I will take the book block and set it in there. So that is the dry fit and it looks like everything's going to work out okay. So now I need to figure out what paper goes on the front. I've got a couple strips of paper that I marbled, oh I don't know, three, four years ago. I just don't even know now. Sure makes me want to make some more though. Get out some PVA. I think I shall put it on the back of the paper. This is risky, and I do not suggest anyone do it like that. Probably isn't a very good idea. I would definitely suggest using a, a cutting guide, but yes, I'm getting glue all over the place. Fold that over and this one. Pinch those ends down. And then roll this over. That's the front. I'm going to glue this book block into the cover. Make sure I have the end pages in the right direction. Of course, if you use end paper that doesn't have a discernible up and down, north and south, head and tail, doesn't matter. Looks about right. So I'm going to lay that down just real carefully and lift that back without moving the text block. A couple pieces of acetate and some vellum because I'll stick that in there for the moment just so I don't get glue everywhere. Put a little glue underneath the super that we, or I, put underneath. I can down like that. Why am I like totally off the thing here? I'll move the camera. There we go. And then I'll paint all the way to the shoulder.
but I want to make sure that I don't have any dry spots. Put my hand underneath here, bring this up and push that down. Kind of seats the joint in there. And then fold that down. I can remove that. Slip a piece of acetate and then flip it over. And I'll do the same thing on this side. The second side is usually easier because it's already secured on the other side. The little book is done. It's all dry. I think it looks pretty good. So thanks to everybody for hanging out with me. I hope maybe you got a little inspiration today. Maybe you learned something. Maybe you didn't, but I hope it was entertaining either way. Thanks for letting me ramble about decluttering my closets and drawers and cabinets. Maybe that gave you some motivation and inspiration too. I hope everybody is having a great week and I will see you all really, really soon in the next video. Bye guys.